Well, it didn't go their way again today as we welcome you to Eagles Post Game Live. This was a three pen affair that uh, apparently they got to go back to the drawing board. Outscored the last two games 83 to 51. Coaching was unacceptable. The play on the offense, maybe you could excuse it because the offensive line was completely decimated, but the defense giving up, my goodness, 42 points. As we welcome you to the post game show, here come the Eagles off the field in defeat. And uh, the fans left a lot earlier than this, Barrett and Ray and Seth, as the, as the fans, midway through the fourth quarter, they had seen enough. So they knew what the deal was here, and they struggled defensively most of the day, if not the entire day. <laughs> Offensively, you know, I, I got to give it to an offensive line that is switching up, and the only starter on the line is Jason Kelsey. Uh, Jalen Hurts finishes 32 of 48 with 370, 87 yards passing, two touchdowns, and a rating of 105. But when you, you look at the fact that Kansas City's red zone defense, and Ray and I discussed it during our halftime update, Barrett, when, when you look at the fact that coming in, 13 opportunities in the red zone for the Kansas City opposition, 12 times they had scored touchdowns, and the Eagles couldn't do that. Um, and it was a, it really was frustrating. What do you think of this one, Barrett? You know, I mean, I, I don't believe in moral victories. Um, you know, you look at what they did out there. We must temper our, our expectations, understanding that this team is not a good team right now. They're not built to be a good team right now. They're trying to be competitive, but um, I mean, the, the story is after they the starters leave, they're not a good team. This offensive line that played today is not the offensive line that could take them into the future and be a team that could compete uh, in, in, in the division or anything. Because we're talking about young guys are playing, guys are already slated to even play. And, you know, just so just looking at that aspect of it, I see that they're getting better. And that's the sole purpose of this year and how we have to look at it. This team has to get better in so many different ways. I mean, the penalties still got to stop. They were caught off guard in so many situations where it's stupid penalties and which is keeping them from doing it. I mean, there were scoring opportunities where they had two touchdowns, they got called back. They had an opportunity where they overthrew a touchdown to Ertz. They turned around and did had a sprint right option to Ward. He dropped that one. Those are all things. That's that's four touchdowns right there. They could be in the column instead of field goals or even, you know, being denied from even scoring in the red zone. There are so many things that this team needs to settle down and get better at that they have a lot of work to do, but at least they're going in the right direction. And you know, and, and, and at least scoring points, running the ball. You're talking offense. Yes, You're offensive. talking offense. Oh, no question. They, We're not they, even going to talk about that linebacker. I'm going to let yeah. Steph talk about the linebacker. Oh, yeah. They, Ray, they did put up 30 points offensively. I understand that the last seven came, it was window dressing, as Ian yeah. Eagle called it. But they did put up that 30 or 23. Here comes Nick Sirianni with a, uh, a full pen. Uh, set coming uh, on the visor. Haven't seen that really. But when you look at what <laughs> plays he called, Ray, and their effectiveness, taking points off the board, he did that again. I know that's supposedly a no no, but uh, he was trying to get touchdowns in the red zone versus field goals, and he had to end up with the field goals. Devontae Smith, man, he makes some catches. Son of a gun. He can go up, he gets the ball. Um, but when you look at the offense first, Ray, what do you think today of their performance? And do you agree with Barrett that they're getting? He ran better? out of bounds, also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought they had a better uh, they had a better plan of attack than they did in Dallas. I, I, I think that they they did their homework this week. They studied the Kansas City defense. They had seen the things that had given Kansas City defense trouble over the last couple weeks. Um, and what that what it was mostly was the Chargers in particular, but the Ravens even to the week before that. Uh, really gave the Chiefs trouble by running a lot of quick stuff, moving fast tempo, and it just seemed to confuse that there's something going on with the Chiefs defense right now. The communication between the players and the coaches is not good. Uh, and you saw it when they lost to Baltimore, you saw it when they lost to the Chargers, is motion and tempo really makes it is problematic for this Kansas City defense. So the Eagles came into this game knowing that based on their film study and they did in their first in their first ever possession you saw how quick they moved a lot of quick passes a lot of short passes and they were able to move the ball really well they were able to drive the ball but when they got it inside the red zone they couldn't finish the drives that was the problem and we said before the game that the Chiefs coming into this game had the worst red zone defense 
in all of football. 13 possessions, they'd given up 12 touchdowns in there. Can't get much worse than that. Uh, and the Eagles had their opportunities. And in a game where you knew the Chiefs were going to score, your only hope for hanging with them was every time you got it in the red zone, you would take advantage of that bad red zone defense. The Eagles didn't do that nearly well enough. Um, so we're going to talk about the offense. We're going to talk about the quarterback. Um, to me, I, the greater concerns to me are the defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, the defense now for two weeks in a row has just been torn to pieces. Uh, and I understand the Kansas City defense, the Kansas City offense is really good. And I understand that Mahomes is, is an elite quarterback and he has terrific weapons around him. And the offensive line is better than it was last year. But, I mean, really? I mean, seven, eight possessions, seven touchdowns? Yeah. I mean, and, and made it look easy. I mean, every time they got the ball, they just walked it right down the field and scored. I mean, you look at eight plays, 77 yards, 12 plays, 83 yards, seven plays, 75 yards, 11, 75, 11 plays, 75, seven plays, 65. Um, you can't get a stop anywhere? You know, so this is two games in a row where, where teams just basically manhandled you. Uh, your defense and there are issues on the offense to be sure obviously you're gonna have to really do some repair work on the offensive line uh, but to me the equally great are the questions on defense now because for two weeks in a row they've just gotten they've gotten smacked around yeah let's go to Seth Joyner now get his thoughts Seth this is Pat Mahomes fourth game with five or more passing touchdowns in a game that breaks a tie with the great Len Dawson, number 16 for most in Chiefs history. And you look at this uh, Eagles defense, the, the last one of those just looked look terrible uh, on Tyreek Hill's score when Anthony Harris looked like he didn't know which, when, which way was up. But the Chiefs were five for five in the red zone, Seth. The Eagles were two for five in the red zone. Uh, looks like two different sides of the ball. The balance on both sides of the ball is out of whack. The Eagles offense looks like it's got some hope there. They can put up some points, certainly against the Chiefs, but the defense gives them up huge two straight weeks now. Well, I mean, it's execution. You know, if you want to talk about the offensive side of the ball, let's start with, you know, Jalen Hurts and, you know, the two misses. You know, he's got Zach Hurts wide open in the end zone. He overthrows him. Um, he's got Greg Ward wide open in the end zone. And, you know, a lot of people on Twitter was like, oh, he got his hands on the ball. He's got to catch that ball. But, you know, if if there's tight coverage, you know, then you lead the wide receiver. Then it's a matter of understanding the wide receiver that you're throwing to and understanding how far you need to lead each wide receiver. Um, but he had clear separation about five yards. In that situation, he's got to put the ball right on the numbers. It's an easy catch and throw. Um, there was a lot of you know, creativity on the offensive side of the ball. You know, you like what you saw, but I still don't like the fact that, you know, Jalen Hurts put the ball in the air over 40 times. I don't think you're going to win many games whatsoever, you know, if he's got to put the ball in the air that many times. You know, and they just, they ran the ball a total of 12 times. Two of those runs were called runs to Jalen Hurts. Um, and, and I know Miles Sanders has got to be one frustrated running back yeah. in the NFL to realize that he's only touching the ball, you know, seven, six, seven times, you know, per game in the run game. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, especially when you're going against the 31st ranked run defense in the entire NFL. But um, Seth, was it, the, was it, I mean, they, they did move the ball. They got 461 yards of offense. They, they might not have moved the ball in, in the red zone and gotten touchdowns, but it didn't seem like that was the issue. The offense looked like, uh, as you said, they did something to, to make up for the fact that they were missing four out of five offensive linemen, yeah? Listen, you're, you're playing against, you know, one of the worst statistically, one of the worst defenses in the NFL. You know, no one expected for them to come in here and shut the Eagles down. We knew that the Eagles would put points on the board, you know, but when it really mattered, they didn't make the plays that really mattered when they need to make them because then the game is much closer. You know, it, it, the, the 42 points is inflated when you really stop and think about it because, you know, those three possessions where they had to kick field goals, and I was saying all along, you cannot beat Kansas City kicking field goals. If they, if they convert those, you're talking about a difference between 12 points on the scoreboard opposed to just getting nine out of the entire deal. That's a major difference when you're talking about playing against the Patrick Mahomes because I said in the pregame, they may score every single possession and they darn near did it, yeah. you know, seven out, of, seven, seven out of eight possessions. But on the defensive side of the ball, Michael, you know, the Eagles have problems because, you know, 
all the aggressive talk that we heard from Jonathan Gannon, you just don't see it. I see a defense coordinator that is making calls based upon fear. Um, I told you that they would run for over 150 yards. They did it because the Eagles linebackers cannot help in the run game to be able to stop it. And then once you get them on their heels, you get to play action and all the other things that's going on, and you don't play your defensive backs in, a, in an aggressive style. This is almost like watching Jim Schwartz's defense all over again. We're going to sit back and zone defense against one of the most prolific passers that the NFL has ever seen. And you don't think that he's going to take you apart? They're going to move the ball 9 of 10 in third down conversions when they had to convert third downs? Are you kidding me? You know, so I just I just don't see it. And then you throw in the stupid penalties. Josh Sweat offside. Derek Barnett, you know, with the P.I. These things continue to allow you know, a, a already prolific offense to be even that more pro, that much more prolific because you're extending drives form instead of making them earn the drives, you know? So I, I just, when I watch them play on the defensive side of the ball, and you know, I just cringe. I cringe because I realize that they can't stop anyone. You know, teams are going to look at it, they're going to look at the last three games and they're going to come in, they're going to run the ball with consistency. And then when they want to throw it, you know, you've got this, chess match that's going on, you're in four-man line, we're going to run the ball. You're in five-man line, okay, we're going to pass the football. You know, and you can't stop them in either one because just because they're in five-man doesn't mean they're going to throw it because they know that you can't stop the run, period. So what are you going to get? You're going to get play action pass in your five-man front and they're just going to take advantage of, you know, guys being in zone. The linebackers don't have any awareness of what's around them when 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 they're in zone covers, they're dropping to a landmark and they're standing at the quarterback and guys are running in front of them and behind them without any definition of, okay, this is number three. Once number three enters my zone, I got to match up to him because he's the guy that's in my zone. No awareness, you know? So this is going to persist. You know, you're going to see the offense play well in, in, in spurts throughout the year. Jalen Hurts is going to have some good plays, some bad plays is going to be a roller coaster ride for him. But defensively, I'm not sure that you can look at this defense the way it's constructed and really say to yourself, hey, there's hope because there is none. And yeah. I know they were playing the Kansas City Chiefs, but they look like this the last three weeks.